Hi, and welcome back to the Scout Sew Along. In today's lesson, I'll be walking you through the assembly of the cap sleeve. This is the sleeve that comes with the Scout pattern, as well as how to sew the short sleeve and the long sleeve. Those two sleeves come with the Scout Variation Pack. All three sleeves follow the same construction method, so I'm grouping them together in this video. After that, I'll walk you through how to set your sleeves into the body of your garments. If you're making the standard scout, the short sleeve, or the long sleeve, you'll have your garment completed after this. If you're using the cuffed sleeve or the pedal sleeve from the variation pack, we'll have those two videos following this. So with that, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is assemble our sleeves. So you'll have two sleeves and you wanna lay them out with the right side facing up. Now check right now to make sure you have two opposite sleeves. So here we have the two notches for the back, one notch for the front, two notches for the back, one notch for the front. So these are opposite. Also double check that you have clipped your notch at the top of the sleeve cap. If you have missed any of these notches, put those in now because these are gonna be very important lining up the sleeve into the sleeve cap. So to start, I like to fold both of my sleeves over so that I can't mess up and end up with two of the same sleeves. We're going to align the underarm seam, pin that in place. Then we're gonna head over to the machine and we're gonna sew that seam. That's a half inch seam allowance, so let's go do that now. All right, so we are at the machine. We're gonna just align our sleeve for our half inch seam allowance. Just do a small back tack. And sew that underarm seam. Now you're gonna to need to finish the seam allowance. I'm going to serge mine, but again, do whatever you either feel comfortable with or have available to you. So once again, I just line my seam line up with the mark on my foot. And finish that seam allowance. Now we need to press our seam allowance towards the back of our sleeve. So again, as we noted before, the two notches are for the back of the sleeve. So your seam allowance will point towards the two notches. Press that. And now I like to hem my sleeve at this point just find it easier than hemming it when it's attached to the body. That's up to you. If you think you are not going to be happy with the length of this sleeve, you might wanna to wait to hem it until after it's on the body. I'm going to hem mine now. The steps are the same either way. You're gonna fold up that quarter inch. It's the same as we did for the body of the garment. And I do do this on a sleeve roll because the sleeve is usually a little small to go over your ironing board.
right, now here we are back where we started. So we're going to fold it up again a quarter of an inch to hide that raw edge and press. So we now have our hem edge pressed up. We're gonna head over to our machine. And once again, we're going to stitch the free folded edge down to secure it in place. I'm going to remove my table so I have my free arm. Slide the sleeve around that. Small back tack. Back tack back at the beginning. Clip your threads. And our sleeve is now hemmed. So there you can see the front, the back. Now head back over to the table. Now before we set our sleeves, I just want to talk about the short sleeve and the long sleeve really quick. These two sleeves follow the exact same construction method that we just did. So what you're gonna do for both of these is fold the underarm seams together just like we did for the cap sleeve. And then again for the short sleeve underarms together. Then you're gonna sew the underarm seam and finish the edge. After that, you'll turn up the hem, just like we just did for the cap, and hem that. And that's all there is to the short sleeve and the long sleeve. It's not really worth making a separate video for each one because all three of these follow the exact same construction steps. So if you are making the cap sleeve, the short sleeve or the long sleeve, the construction is the same. We now need to prep our sleeve cap so we can set it into our garment. To do this, we're going to place two lines of basting stitches between the notch at the front of the sleeve and the double notch at the back. The first line of stitching will fall 3 eighths of an inch from the cut edge. The second will fall 5 eighths of an inch from the cut edge. The reason for this spacing is that our seam allowance is a half inch. So one line of gathering stitches will be on either side of your seam. This means you're less likely to stitch puckers or anything like that into your sleeve cap. So let's head over to the machine and we'll put our basting stitches in now. So I'm going to turn my stitch length all the way up to six, which is the highest my machine goes. And I'm going to set my sleeve underneath my presser foot, starting with the first notch. You can see right here. I'm just gonna stitch three eighths of an inch from the cut edge, leaving a thread tail.
and then you can see the two notches approaching. We're gonna stop there, lift your needle, pull a thread tail, and you're gonna leave a thread tail at this end as well. I'll pull out a little more thread. Put our second line of stitches in at five eighths of an inch, again, starting at the single notch. Work around. Again, stopping at the double notches at the back and leave a thread tail. Now I'm gonna organize my thread tails so the ones on the right side of the garment follow the right side and the ones on the wrong side follow the wrong side. Now grab your bodice and turn it inside out. Now we wanna make sure we're setting the right sleeve into the right armhole. So here we have two notches, which is the back, one notch is the front. So this one is going to go on this side. One notch, one notch, two notches for the back. So you're gonna take your sleeve and put it inside of the shirt. So here we have right sides together sleeve on the inside, shirt on the outside. Start by pinning the underarm seam, then match the single notch of the armhole with the single notch of the sleeve. Pin that. And then I like to put a pin in between those two. Then I move over to the double notch at the back So here I have the double notches of the back and the double notch of the sleeve aligned. And I just place a pin right between there. Now we need to align the sleeve cap. So find your single notch and that single notch at the top of the sleeve cap aligns with the shoulder seam. So pin those together. And you'll see the sleeve cap is a little longer than the armhole. And that's what your gathering stitches are for. I like to pull mine tighter than I need to. So the sleeve cap is smaller than the armhole. Then I pull gently to release the excess gathering and you get a really nice um, gather, no puckering, anything like that. And you can just easily pin that in place. I really find overgathering and then releasing just really helps to get a smooth set. Then you're going to repeat that for the back. Pull those back gathering stitches and release. And if you do need to kind of smooth anything out, you can just go in with your finger and lightly rearrange and then pin that in place as well. And again, I'm doing centers out. Always, always, that's how I always do it. Just makes it easier to make sure everything is nice and even. All right, so we now have our sleeve pinned into our armhole. We're gonna head over to the machine. We're gonna sew around the armhole All right, you're gonna want your free arm available again. All right, so you just pop your sleeve underneath there. Oh, ha <laughs> ha! Remember to adjust your stitch length. I did not. So don't be me, adjust your stitch length. Do a back tack. And then you're just gonna sew around the sleeve and use your fingers to make sure things are flat. You can feel if there's a lump approaching. So just keep your fingers in there. I'm gonna to try to keep mine out so you can see. Um, but if something feels strange, it feels like there's a lump, just lift your presser foot and double check. 
So it feels like there's a lump, there probably is a lump. So here I think I can feel one. Here by the tiny tuck. There we go. So you just smooth that out and keep stitching. And I know some people like to sew with the sleeve facing up because it makes you feel like you're going to sew over more tucks if the sleeve is facing down. But if you sew with the sleeve facing down, the feet dogs move slightly faster than the fabric that is touching the presser foot. And that's because of the friction on the presser foot. Um, so you can use that to your advantage when doing light easing. So it'll just help the bottom fabric to move through just ever so slightly faster. It's mild, but if I can put something to work for me like that, then I always try to. All right, stitch around to where you started. Trim your threads. And before you remove any basting threads, just go around, look at your sleeve cap, make sure there's no tucks. Because once you take those out, it's going to be a lot harder to fix. So I don't see any tucks. So we're going to one at a time. Just remove our basting threads. And you'll find one within the seam allowance and one inside the shirt because we had one on either side of our stitching line. So now we're gonna to wanna to finish the seam allowance because we don't wanna have all these raw edges. So I'm going to serge around mine. I'll do that now. All right, so I just place my sleeve underneath my presser foot, and you're gonna to have to cut in on an angle to do this, so just go slow. Once again, I have my stitching line aligned with the notch on my foot. Just rotate and keep one hand just right in front so you make sure you're not cutting over something that you don't wanna be, like another part of your shirt or who knows. Keep rotating. Come back around and just cut that off. You can leave a tail and thread it back through if you want to. I overlapped enough that it doesn't really bother me. Um, that's totally up to you. All right, we have our sleeve attached. Our seam allowance is finished. And we're just gonna give the sleeve a light steam. We're just gonna gently, gently steam it away from the body, the seam allowance and the sleeve. You don't wanna really go to town. It's gonna flatten the sleeve out. And it looks nice to have a little bit of a puff there. Puff's maybe not the right word, but. So I just kind of hover and do a light hand press. I don't like a super pressed sleeve on a shirt like this. If you're maybe doing a button up and you're going to um, flat fell your seam, something like that, of course you'd wanna press. But just a light seam is nice on a shirt like this. Blouse type. So just work around the sleeve cap and I don't bother with the underarm. So you can see that just sits a little more nicely once it's steamed. So now you just need to repeat those steps for the other sleeve. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our video updates. I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye.